Okay, so I said I was going to make a video about Mark Loebliner first, but I think this one has to come first because this one just came up. So it's about Furious Pete and his testicular cancer. It's come back. Hey, now I know what you think I'm going to say. I, you think I'm going to say, it's fucking Furious Pete's fault. It's all fucking Furious Pete's fault. Um, he should be vegan. He should have been plant-based, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, okay, he should have. But is it his fucking fault? We don't know. We don't know if he's fucking if it's his fucking fault. So there's no use like being an asshole and saying you got it because you didn't eat plant based or whatever. There's no point saying that because we don't know for sure. However, we know that uh, all these foods that he eats are responsible for increasing your cancer risk. And I'm not giving Furious Peter a free pass here because simply because he has cancer doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about. Uh, reasons why uh, you could increase your cancer risk. For instance, in the US, the Republicans like to say, uh, or the conservatives like to say, we're not going to talk about gun control. Um, someone's just died. Uh, there's been a mass shooting, um, which occurs every single fucking day. Uh, you know, we're not going to talk about gun control because it's too sensitive right now. No, this is when we need to talk about it. This is when there's a platform for talking about cancer and Furious Pete has provided it. He he wants to get the message out there to everyone. I've watched his videos. He's talked about talked about how he wants to educate people on the cancer uh, treatment process um, and he, his journey uh, through cancer. Now that's all good, but you know in his video he said something like you know his doctor said diet had nothing to do with it. His diet, his personal diet had nothing to do with the cancer. That's just fucking bullshit and. The, basically, the doctors there are just blowing smoke up his ass. I mean, look at this. This is published in the American Journal of Health Promotion. It says that despite compelling statistics that show we can eliminate 80% of all heart disease and strokes, 90% of all diabetes, and 60% of all cancers with basic lifestyle changes, we have failed to motivate the public to make these changes and failed to motivate policymakers to make healthier choices uh, the easiest choice. That is the big problem. Now, food industry wants you to believe that you know you can do all this stuff in moderation. It's the same thing the smoking industry used, uh, the tobacco industry used back in the day. Just smokes in in moderation. You know all this bad food in, in just moderation. Um, animal products just in moderation. So, what's my overall message for the video? Uh, it is, don't be an ignorant cunt and say. You know, Furious Pete got cancer because of his diet and he's he's paying for it. That's just insensitive and I don't think that helps anyone. However, it I'm not providing a scapegoat, scapegoat for him at the same time because his cancer his cancer will probably grow quicker because he has such a shit diet. That's what will happen. That that definitely will happen. And you know, these high protein diets promote IGF one production. More IGF-1, more prostate cancer. More IGF-1, more breast cancer. Of course, it's not the original tumor that tends to kill you, it's the metastases. IGF-1 is a growth factor. It helps things grow, so it helps cancer cells you know, break off from the main tumor, migrate into surrounding tissues, and invade the bloodstream. And, uh, you know, what do you think helps you know, breast cancer get into the bone? IGF-1. And the liver, IGF-1. A lung, brain, you know, lymph nodes, IGF-1. Helps transform normal cells into cancer cells in the first place, then helps them survive, proliferate, self-renew, grow, migrate, invade, stabilize into new tumors, and even helps hook the blood supply up to the new tumor. IGF-1 is a growth hormone that makes things grow. That's what it does. But too much growth when we're all grown up can mean cancer. But wait a second. Studies have found no association between total protein intake and IGF-1 levels. Doesn't that just go against everything I just said? Ah, but these studies didn't take into account animal versus plant protein. In this study of meat-eaters, vegetarians, and vegans, they found no significant difference in IGF levels between people eating lots of protein compared to people eating less protein. But before ditching the theory that excessive protein intake boosts the levels of IGF-1, they decided to break it down into animal protein versus plant protein. Higher IGF-1 levels were just associated with animal protein intake. In fact, the plant protein seemed to decrease IGF-1 levels. 
So no wonder there was no net effect of total protein intake. Animal protein appears to send a much different signal to our livers than most plant proteins. So even those vegans eating the same amount of protein as meat eaters still had lower levels of the cancer-promoting hormone IGF-1. So it's apparently not about excessive protein in general, but about animal protein in particular. So my advice is check out Dr. Greger's one-hour-long lectures. Uh, there's about three of them, I think. Uh, and also check out John McDougall, Dr. Esselstyn, uh, Dr. Neil Bernard. I'll put some links below. Look, and if you don't care about the environment, you don't care about your health, you don't care about the animals, then what the fuck do you care about?